Hey Cashers, Derek here, Big Six Land. I am on the campus of the Texas Wesleyan University here in Fort Worth, Texas. And I am here at the GPS maze. I've had the opportunity of being able to be here for the last few days, looking at how they're putting this together, talking to a lot of the volunteers and the builders. So join me on this very special behind the cache, behind the maze. The game of geocaching is more than just finding ammo cans in the woods or small containers in light posts and other unique locations. There are events of all kinds, challenges, and even collectible coins, just to name a few. On your geocaching profile, you can find the icons you have earned. It was the pursuit of these icons that motivated Vince Rowe, one of the maze builders, to bring the GPS maze back to the United States. I was one of those that said, you know, is it possible to get an icon? And what icons could I not get? So I just got a locationless cache in Minnesota, and so I've added that icon. Then I said, GPS maze, and knew the GPS maze was only in Europe. So planned a trip to Europe, uh, in, which was business actually. It was on a business trip where we would swing through the Czech Republic and, and go to their Giga in Pomlov, and we would then go to the GPS maze while we were there. So it wasn't really an inspiration, it was more of a motivation of my addiction. And so if you think about it is that uh, it was not something that I thought we could pull off, but we did. And what ultimately happened was we toured a maze. And if you think about it, the, the maze was not an idea that we came up with solely by ourselves. It was something that had already been here from a commercial company years ago. And what the Czech Republic had done is revamped it, came up with a new model, added Adventure Labs, and we thought we could probably replicate that. And that's what we did, is that we, we went back and we talked to the Czech Republic and said, hey, we're thinking about doing this, would you guys be interested to helping us? And inspiration then came once they said yes. They said they would help us, they would teach us the lessons they learned, and put together some of the, the components of what they used in their maze that we witnessed, and then replicate some of those pieces. But You'll, you'll know if, you, if anybody's been to Europe, this is not their maze. Maybe some of the ideas and some of the structures, but other than that, this is very, very American. Once the idea was there, it, it, it first had to come to a point, well, can I sell this idea to, uh, to Groundspeak, right? How do we get it to Groundspeak? And that was a process all in itself. So Groundspeak was resistant and we tried to get to it through a couple of other people, but most of the time they came back and said, nope, we're not gonna do it. Um, even the locals here. So when we got to a point where we were thinking about Geo Woodstock and trying to you know, create a, a giga here, we would like to do the same thing. You know, ideas would be accepted more liberally than they would in the past in the fact that they, hey, we want to push this to 3,000. One of the things that kept coming up is how do we make this special? How do we make this special? And uh, our buddy Vince Rowe said, we need to do the maze. We need to introduce the maze. And since I was already on the Crazy 8 planning team, I just thought there's no way we can take on one more thing like that. It's just too much. But he continued to persist in the way that only Vince can. Continue to push, continue to push. We decided to go ahead and submit a proposal. We submitted a proposal right around Christmas time. D. Vickery finally sent the letter and, and Annie Love came back and said, hey, ran it by Brian and yes, such a happy day because I can't tell you how many people told me that nope, you can't do it, it'll never happen. And you know, I just, not somebody that takes no for the answer and, and you know, I kept pushing and I knew there would be a time when we could push it to the next level. Literally the first day when we started constructing the maze was the day that we made the announcement. Go ahead and um, unveil what, we, what we've been look, working on. And you can see in the back here, the GPS maze is coming to, coming to Texas. It's coming back to the United States. And Vince came over to my house. I had uh, picked up 120 pieces or probably 500 pieces of this pipe that we made the maze out of, three quarter inch uh, EMT conduit. I bought a chop saw uh, a couple years before that I've used for some stuff around the house. I got a carbide blade and we went to work cutting the, the pipe. Uh, that worked great. It was like I said, a hot knife through butter for the, about the first 30, 35 cuts. Then it started throwing off more and more sparks, started getting harder and harder to cut. 
by about 45 cuts, I couldn't even get through the pipe. We had to run up to Lowe's, get another saw blade. We went through that process about three or four times before we got everything cut. At the very end, we were cutting one foot length pieces of pipe to use as stands on the bottom. And every time I'd cut one, uh, the force of that would just send that pipe shooting through the room. And after two of those, Vince very intelligently decided he was getting out of the room. So I, I think the lesson we learned out of that was we didn't really know what the hell we were doing. Many people told us afterwards we were using the completely wrong stuff, but we just persevered and, and got it done. So then team building, how do we build the team? Where did the team come together? Is that uh, we knew we needed a place. We knew we needed uh, a lot of talent and a lot of skill. We needed people that, that, that had time. And then, and you know, Brian and, and under Brian's leadership on some of the pieces in the graphic design area, how were we gonna do it? And logistics is, is things that, that I love to do and operational things to orchestrate things and make it all come together with teams. Uh, we were able to put all the teams together to make that happen. So Dr. Kathy Prater here at Texas Wesleyan University said, hey, I know of a place that would probably be a great place for you to go and, and put all this together. As a chemistry professor at Texas Wesleyan University, I knew that we had uh, a space available that you could rent. And so I asked, and much to my surprise, they said, sure. And so at that point, we found a location for the maze, which made it really become a possibility that there was some place that we could actually build and house this for you know, as long as we needed to house the maze. Dr. Prater put it all together and she's just amazing in, in orchestrating a lot of the other things you don't see in the background. She was instrumental in, in keeping the, 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 the three guys in the team here all pulled together, organized, and, and keeping us on, on a steady pace to do the things that we needed to do when we were out running around. Mark Keeker, who has been afar running this whole thing, he, uh, he's been providing air support and a lot of the ideas, the infernal device. And this is somebody I, I knew I wanted to go get involved as soon as this was even becoming potential reality. His name is Brent Wickersom, and he is the creator of the infernal device in Oklahoma City. Knowing what he could do at the infernal device, it was a no-brainer to bring him up. And luckily, he said yes, and he was the creator of the gadget cast that was outside. You couldn't miss it. It was a spinning longhorn, and it was like seven foot four tall, five foot wide. It was massive. Um, people loved it, though. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And then another person that actually contacted us, asking to help, uh, who also were part of the, the volunteer build team and, and so forth. Uh, their names are Marty and Lori, and their caching name is Boomer Buckeyes. And they brought down to the maze something they used at one of their events called Geo Plinko. It was an activity we had outside the maze. Uh, kids loved it, adults loved it. Uh, prizes were won, worked out really well. Rachel, who is really a, a, a fourth person of the, of the builders, did all the graphical designs and she's a student at NYU that actually lives in China, in Guangzhou, and was going to NYU campus in, in uh, Guangzhou and doing this, all this, the graphic designs and our thousands of, of uh, modifications to what, why we were going through the entire thing. So that team was basically the five of us that did a lot of the things that they that, that put in place for the teams that came together and the volunteers and the people to, to organize those type of things. What we've been doing this morning is trying to get everybody acclimated to you know the schematics and the simple blueprints that we made out. Then we laid everything on the floor, masking tape, you probably saw that earlier. But then what we've done is, is tried to tell everybody and teach everybody how each of the bundles work that we brought in from the outside and how they connect together and how to read uh, and measure the things so we can get it right. But a lot of flexibility in these pipes, so we'll have a lot of room to make it happen. But then we have some upper connectors that go across to add stability. And you'll see those. And so in this one, it says three supports to frame H, nine feet, 
three connectors to frame F, one foot. So how does it feel that it's finally being set up? Um, you know, in four months, it's been a whirlwind. We, we didn't think we can get it all done in four months, but it is crazy in the, the amount of work that went in just to get to this point, but, but it feels really good at this point. And now we have to make sure it all fits. We don't know if it fits yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if it doesn't fit, use a bigger hammer. Um, I did see a chop saw over right, here. Yeah, you saw, yeah, the, <laughs> saw the chop saw. We brought saws so, and, 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 and like a baling wire and, and a lot of zip ties. We'll make, make, some, right. make it work. Yeah. Hey, just like geocachers, we use the tools right. that we have. FD Scorpion is my username and uh, just love caching. I wanted to do something to give back a little bit before the big event this weekend, so we're here helping build. This is awesome. Uh, never knew anything about the maze until this year, and of course all of our friends that we cache with, they all said uh, it was a thing to do. So this has been a great experience this morning. Looking forward to the big weekend here. Man, it's going fantastic. This is going to be amazing maze. Hi, my name is Sassy Jr. And uh, DP Blazer and I live here in Fort Worth. And so we're looking forward to having Geo Woodstock here and sleeping in our own bed. And uh, whenever we understood they needed some volunteers, we just love to jump in and do what we can to help out. So they're starting to put all the panels in, getting them in place, moving stuff in and around, and it is a, such an amazing process as they're getting this around. I've got to watch where I'm walking so I don't step on any of these panels. But they're building the different parts of the maze, coming together, getting the panels to. Now remember, this maze is not for you to get lost in. It is an exhibit so that you can learn more about geocaching. Okay, we're about half done. We got the, the front door on, front flap is where everybody's gonna, you know, everybody will see they, they, they've come in. And we've got the walls up, all the banners. We've got Natasha set up. She still needs a regulator, I'm told. Still setting up some of the, the buttons and some of the interactive lab caches, lab adventure caches, some interesting GPSs and old timey GPSs. And, Interesting containers. None of the coins are done yet. We, we, we don't have our curator for the coins. Anne will be here in a little while to start white gloving these. And Sasha's up, kind of. She'll get the And this is where you walk out of, out of here after your, all your interactive displays. And out in the vendor area and some of the, the uh, um, uh, other shows will be recorded here on Sunday afternoon, a few other things. But Gary's here just doing his, his acclimation visit and getting his pressure up. Dark room's done too, we just passed that. You can see all that over there in that area too. behind me the coins are finally going in we got a nice little production crew going on down here as they're putting the coins in making sure that they're all logged with the right numbers and everything that's going in there so when they take them out they'll be able to get them again just a lot of really cool coins we had 300 some trackables all throughout the maze and not just on the boards but also like the name badges on Sasha and Natasha. And we wanted people to be able to log all those trackables without having to take the time to write all the codes down. So I called up my friend Jason Fox and enlisted his help. And he and I worked on the concept, the development, and the implementation of the QR code that allowed all users to log 300 plus trackables with just a couple clicks on the mouse. It worked great. Uh, he brought it to a level I didn't know existed.
Viking says we're open for business. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. If I could get group one up here on the little patio area here. Group one, now serving. Serving group one. Serving group one. One, we want to welcome you and thank you all for coming because without you, you wouldn't need volunteers. I am so happy and I'm so excited that I got to experience the GPS base. It has not been in the United States for years. And finally, finally, the good folks down here made it happen. I had fun. I think. I think a new geocacher would learn a lot. I think people that weren't geocachers, I think they'd learn a lot. And there's a lot of things for geocachers to love as well. Trackables to discover, interactive. I had a night cache experience. I got to put on those horns and they gave me a, a cowboy hat before I left. Thumbs up. <laughs> Visiting here from Seattle, Washington. I actually work at Geocaching HQ. Uh, I'm a business development manager and work with our API partners and uh, all of our trackable partners and shop geocaching. So if you see a trackable, I've probably had something to do with that. Um, and I'm just so happy to be here at the maze. Um, it's so great to have it back in the US. I have really enjoyed working with the staff as they've just been working on the panels over the last few months and just really happy with what, what came together here today and really excited for geocachers to get to experience this after I think five years of it not being in the US so yeah I had missed the opportunity to get the maze a number of years ago and that was always a major regret of mine when I found this was going to be here I said okay some people are doing a lot of work to do something amazing for us. And yes, I did intentionally use amazing. I did it earlier this morning. It's fun to go back and look at the history that they have captured here and what geocaching is about. So it's very, very much appreciated to the builders and supporters and everyone who has gotten this going. So again, I say thank you very much. I've wanted to do the maze for a while, and it's been gone from the United States for a while, so I was really excited when it was in Texas. Um, the other thing is they asked for some stories, and I was able to submit a story, and it actually made it on the wall, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm from Paderborn, Germany, and um, this is my second uh, maze and the first maze in the United States and I'm really impressed about it. Uh, so I got a lot of new information and yeah, thank you for the great maze. This is actually my personal contribution to the maze. You know, I found this uh, antique military GPS in an old abandoned Connex. I cleared it with, you know, my higher ups. If I was able to take this, they said that's fine. And so I donated this. This is the GPS maze. This is like a pre blue switch GPS that the military used. And it's right here. Something that stood out to me that was really cool to see was the collection GeoCoins. And that was impressive. And uh, really just the, the way the community came together to put this together uh, for all of us to enjoy. Learning about the history of geocaching from the very beginning. So many things I didn't know and it makes the, the game even that much more interesting now, more meaningful. And the hours and the effort that were put into this are just astounding. So it's really a, a privilege uh, to, to get to enjoy it like this. You know, you, you think about putting these kinds of things together and there's a tremendous amount of time and effort that goes into actually the construction of the maze and putting all the banners together, putting the frames together, doing all the, the content for the maze. But the real experience happens when people go through the maze and the people that impact that experience are the volunteers. So the volunteers are the ones that are helping our customers, the visitors, at every step of the way. And that was the first thing that we realized when we got here is how important those volunteers were and what a great experience they made it for everyone. We got so many compliments about all the volunteers, about how friendly they were, how helpful they were. And at the end of the day, and I told them this in, in the volunteer emails, 
you're the ones that are going to make this thing a great experience for everyone, and they came through in spades. It's great to be a volunteer because you get to give a little bit back to the caching community. Sometimes we get a little frustrated with things and we just need to understand how things work from the inside. So that volunteering gives you a little opportunity to be able to do that as well. And I've been having a ton of fun with this maze. This is the fourth maze that Team Bearcat has attended. But this is the first one we got to volunteer at. And this has been a load of fun. Mike's in there in the night cache, which is a lot of fun. And I'm out here watching people get all frustrated and, and everything with this infernal device maze. So it's, it's been just part of an awesome weekend. I have been just amazed by how much volunteers will do. I've never been involved in a project of this magnitude before, and I, you know, I've, I've been to other events, but I've never been involved in, I guess, creating an event like this one, and seeing how much people are willing to do just to give their time and help out for something like that has been amazing to me. And I've been really happy to see how the positive feedback that we've gotten and a lot of what I've seen, if people commented about how great the volunteers were, and I, I can't say that enough. We just, we could not have done this. I mean, the, the four of us, there's no way we could have created this without a ton of help from the volunteers. They were amazing. So we'd like to think that we're, we're responsible for this, but at the end of the day is that uh, we were just the facilitators. We were the orchestrators. There were so many people that, that none of this could have happened if things didn't come together. And we were just on hopium. You know, there was nothing that we thought that would come together and we would be able to pull together without, you know, without a lot of help. We knew that this was very people intensive. When we put this together, we, we knew we were gonna fund it through the sale of t-shirts and coins like you, you do on most of these big events. Uh, but then we had the idea of, well, why don't we create a Friends of the Maze package? And essentially with the Friends of the Maze package, gave you the number of coins and t-shirts, but also a level of recognition. And we had no idea if that was gonna work out or not. And literally, when we were on the uh, podcast, making the announcement, by the time the podcast ended, we already had three people signed up for the Friends of the Maze package. And so I just remember turning to Vince and looking at him and saying, well, all those saw blades that we used up that weren't really in our original budget, at least we've covered those. So I wanna thank the Friends of the Maze. They've been great. We had over 100, I think we had 114 Friends of the Maze. They really created a huge uh, funding source for us. Uh, support from TXGA and some of the teams there. Uh, there, are, there are people that built some of the buttons and the interactive things here. Race of Bard did an incredible job. Uh, it, Brent, uh, Brent uh, KB Quick did the Infernal Device, which is a maze device that you'll see out outside of the maze. He just did an incredible job. And On top of that, we had a number of sponsors, people that really s stepped up and, and kind of went the extra yard to help us make this great. Uh, obviously, geocaching.com, just giving us the opportunity to do the maze. Um, we had Baytown GeoTour, they've been a tremendous partner with us. AFK Coins, who helped us with our coins and our t-shirt designs. Drives Cash Closet. Logworks, who also provided us uh, funding as well as some samples. And there's probably other people that I'm forgetting, but they all have very been very generous in helping us get this whole maze funded. Oh, behind the cash! How can I forget you guys? <laughs> so none of this really it mattered if, if all those people didn't come together at the same time to be able to pull all this off. It wouldn't have happened. It could have failed miserably. It could have been really bad. Yeah, this 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 could have been a, a DNF. Uh, you know, we could have been somewhere up in the tree looking for a half an hour to make all this happen. But it, it did come together, and there were some really really crazy good people that, that made it happen. So like. Ending any other speech, where does it go from here? Does it get better? What we believe that this is just the base. There are so many more incredible people out there in the geocaching community that will change the complexion of this at the next place and the next place and what it'll look like the next time. And so what you see here is not what it's going to be the next time and in the future. And I think that's the way we built it. We wanted it to be adaptable. We wanted it to be local and culturally sensitive to the areas that it's going to go to and be in. 
but ultimately, you know, that's that's what I think that we wanted when we thought about bringing this back. So we're pretty excited about, you know, not having any ego in this first one. We know it's going to change, and what it's going to be in the future is nothing like what what we provided here. But you know, I think we set the bar pretty high. And what we're going to do in the future is going to be entirely different than what's here, and and we encourage you to do so. Thank you for joining me with this very special behind the cash called Behind the Maze. Now, we've heard from the builders, we've heard from the volunteers, and we've heard from the maze goers, and this has just been such a great time, a fun event, great icon, and this maze is just beginning. As it travels over the next two years to different places, and we'll find out where those places are through the next few months and everything, it will be going to another mega, but we don't know which one it is. Be sure to keep looking for where it's going to be going, but you do not want to miss this maze. Hey, we let me give you a list of all the different friends of the maze and the sponsors that helped this happen. As we close out today, leave me a comment down below and let the builders and the volunteers and those that have worked so hard to put this maze together know how much you really appreciated it. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time right here on Behind the Cache.